It's time to unleash your inner fashionista and refresh your look with seven expert tips for women over 50. From dressing your body shape to experimenting with new styles and colors, I'm going to show you how to look and feel your best. Discover how accessories can update your look and why it's not rude to ask a lady her age and how simple makeup changes can take you from frumpy to fashionable. Follow along as I take you on a journey to rediscover your style and to be truly fabulous over 50. Here is tip number one if you are over 50. Don't wear what they say you should wear. For goodness sake, can you see what's out there? <laughs> My gosh, we are too young to be dressing in those frumpy, big, loose pants and those, I don't know, the new patterns of, of colors and, and flowers we should be wearing because we turned 50. Whatever, man, listen, you are a woman. You have a boldness and a beauty that is not to be hidden. And there is no number on the planet that should you maybe suddenly go, oh, I should dim my light. I should turn it down. No, you are not to apologize for your boldness, your beauty, or your age, by the way. We're going to get to that in a minute. So number one, if you're out there, if you're over 50 and you've been doing research on what you wear over 50 or what is appropriate for 50 or 60 plus, I'm here to tell you as a style coach, as a confidence coach, Ditch that which you have found, unless it's serving you well. Ditch it. You are too beautiful, too vibrant to be dressing that way. I've done the research for 10 years. I'm like, oh my gosh, who's coming up with this stuff? Someone who's really sad and mad with the world is saying what women over 50 should be wearing. Let me give you a different take. Don't be afraid to show a little bit of skin, right? So you are a beautiful, feminine beta. You can be modest and faithful and a married woman at the same time is wearing a beautiful, slightly sexy, flirty, off-shoulder or one-shoulder top like I'm wearing, and it's perfectly okay. When it comes to your body, you need to understand what, what I call your best fits. What are your best fits? And to get there, you need to know your body shape. If you want to learn about that, you're also welcome to come and attend my webinar. But when it comes to your best fits, you know the parts of your body that you that you love and maybe those that you don't. Now, I'm not going to focus on those that you don't because I'm a woman who committed years ago to never again criticizing my butt, my boobs, my belly, any part of my body. That's a different conversation for another time. To highlight your best bits, you want to have a look and say, what is it about my face that I like? Do I like, is, what, how does my neck and my decolletage and my, my whole shoulder area look like? What about my boobs? Do I, am I blessed in the chest like I am? Or do I have teeny tiny little apples or little peaches for boobs? And, and how do I work with that? What about my arms, my waist? What about my legs? Do I like my ankles? You need to spend time with the woman in the mirror to figure this out. There's no other way to do it. Remember that style and beauty are subjective. So you're going to get different opinions from other people. You need to train your eye and train your mind to highlight that about you, which you love. And yes, there are many things about you, which you love. You're just in a bad habit of criticizing your beautiful self. But choose one thing today. What is one thing that you love? For me, I love my shoulders, although they're nice and strappy and tan from a beautiful sunny Africa lately. And, and it doesn't stop me from wearing some of my favorite pieces. Like I wear this right now and I wear it to lunch and I wear it to dinner with all kinds of different things. But you need to understand the things about your body that make you feel good. My shoulders make me feel good when I wear something strappy. And by the way, Am I 100% happy with how my arms look? I uh, know I'm working on that and I have been for a long time, but I will not let my upper arms restrict my personal style. I just want to have too much fun with fashion. I've done that for too long. Don't let your upper arms dictate your life indoors. It is just crazy. So shoulders, for example, which is going to lead me to one shoulder, off shoulder, halter neck perhaps. I like my legs and so I wear shorts and I wear skinnies and I wear really nice fitted jeans and bootleg jeans and cigarette pants and faux fur leggings and spanks. In the middle, it's like there's a lot of other stuff going on here that I kind of like to float over, hence my, what I call my skinny, floaty, floaty, skinny personal style. I like to float over the items that I don't really want to highlight so much and I skinny the rest. That is just my personal style. It's one of many. So you want to highlight your best bits. And right now, press pause, and I think that it would be a good exercise for you to go to the mirror and go, what is a part of my body that I really like? Because that is stopping the outsourcing of what should I be doing? What should I be wearing? What 
and then you go to the mirror and you decide because actually you do know inside of you the parts of your body that you think are beautiful. You just don't have much of a habit of going there. So do that right now and then come back and I'll get you to the next little style step, which is shape and not size. In this world, we are trained to focus on our size. And in fact, those who have identified a good personal style for their bodies, for their personalities, their lifestyle, their, their, their careers, they've understood that it's more about shape and not size. You've seen big, large, overweight women out there dressed beautifully, swaggering down the runway of their lives and looking and feeling confident and beautiful, right? They're out there. You see them often. So do I. And we go, like, wow, man, like, I wish I had that kind of confidence. It comes from skills. It comes from learning that there is a skill to be learned around personal style. It's like, what is the capsule wardrobe? How do I wear it? What colors work for me? All of these things are easy to learn if you make the time and the commitment to yourself to make that investment, which you should be doing. And once you learn your body shape, you know what kind of lines, angles, and colors you should be wearing. So learning your body shape is a really, really important part of establishing personal style. It is not your size that dictates personal style, although women will dress down and blend into the background when they are trying to hide their excess weight. How long have you been doing that for, friend? How long are you going to wait for the weight? How many years and laughs and memories and activities have you said no to simply because you don't like the size of your body? You withdraw from life-sustaining activities like going to gym, going to the beach, swimming, hanging out with your kids or your grandkids, going to the doctor, going to the grocery store, getting out your front door because you are such a big critic, critic of the woman in the mirror. It's time to stop that. You're past 50. That's what this conversation is about. How many more years are you prepared to sacrifice to the lie that you are too fat? Yes, I say the F word, that you're too fat to get out there and live a beautiful life. If you have come into agreement with that lie, that's on you. I did years ago, and I'm like, hang on a second, this is crazy, and I am miserable, and it's impacting every area of my life. That is something you need to make a decision on. Stop waiting for the weight. You are beautiful, and there is a way to learn how to dress that is going to make you look and feel confident, pretty, feminine, and maybe even a little bit sexy. The next simple style step is accessorizing. Accessorizing is a very important part of finishing off your outfit, whatever that looks like, whether you're going to the office or going to the opera or going to dinner, or if you're working from home. I am, as you can see, a massive fan of bling. I am drawn to all things that catch the light because we're supposed to be in the light, right? You are the light of the world and we are supposed to be this beautiful, bold light on a hill. And women often say to you that I don't know what to wear and I love your accessories. You know what the secret is? The word of the day is play. Just play. This is part of one collection. This is part of another collection. It's not expensive to have a beautiful bling box to build up some beautiful high quality jewelry over the years, which is what I've been doing for years. My personal favorite on the planet is a company called Complot, K-O-N-P-L-O-T-T. I absolutely love them for their versatility, their value for money, uh, how diverse their ranges are. Miranda Constantinito, who's the founder and the designer, oh my gosh, one of the most beautiful, vivacious, down-to-earth, highly successful women on the planet. I go for the heart behind the brand. And she has a team of a thousand women in the Philippines that actually hand make these pieces. So I mix and match and I bring in a little bit of color and I, and I try different things. And I think, no, actually next time I'm going to wear the matching earrings because it'll go nasty with the gray. Well, I'm going to rip I just play. And I've got three categories that I organize. I do silver, gold, and multicolor. This would fall into multicolor. And this would fall into color. Then I have silver and I have gold. And then I display them. So when it comes to your accessories, it's not only limited to your jewelry. You have hats or accessories, scarves, gloves, purses, clutches, crossbody bags. These are all accessories. Nail polish is an accessory. And I love to see my jewelry on display. So I have invested in um, some display. You know, if you go into a mannequin store or a jewelry store, a warehouse kind of store, you buy the mannequins that wear the necklaces, the short little things. So I organize my bangles together. My rings are together. My earrings are all on, this, on, on shelves underneath each other. And then I've got my long necklaces and my short necklaces. And they are arranged on a beautiful cabinet in my bedroom. I have this old gray, ugly wooden cabinet that I had stripped down. 
It's now white and beautiful. It's got mirrors and glass shelves. It looks like an expensive piece of furniture. It isn't. It really isn't. So presenting the items that you're going to wear in a way that is inspiring is also going to make you wear them more often and switch it up and play more. I have some clients who have never in their lives tried false lashes. And I've been wearing false lashes for the longest time, probably at least, I don't know, 10 or 12 years, because I don't have many lashes. They're super short. And like I have three maybe, and maybe four on the side. So I've discovered, oh, I discovered these long time ago, and I, I love them. I, I don't apologize for them. I make no bones about it. If somebody says, oh my gosh, you have beautiful lashes, I'd say, thanks. They're not mine, but they're on my, they're on my eyes, and they are conversation starters and they that's why I talk about fashion being a conversation starter so if you don't know how to apply your makeup again yes you can go to my coaching program you can have a look at all that is there I have an award-winning makeup artist uh, who is a beautiful woman who literally shows my clients how to go from out the shower to in the mirror to out the front door in 15 minutes on a beautiful fresh nude dewy look and we can also show you how to do that dark smoky eye look as well but until then or if you and I never work together you want to go to a department store and you want to sit down with an experienced consultant someone who knows who looks like she knows what she's doing by age you know she's got some experience behind her and ask her about the right red lipstick ask her are you wearing the right foundation go and do a little bit of research before that on on what brand is good you know the the Estee Lauders the Revlons out there the Mac is one of my favorites there are so many good brands you just need to Decide what works for you. It is not rude to ask a woman her age. If you have said that or agree with that, you have bought into the worldly attack on your spirit of beauty. We live in a world that says that a skinny size zero or size two is the only acceptable body form for a woman, which obviously we know is not the case. Every year that you have been given, my friend, is a gift from heaven above. What have you done with it? What are you doing with it? Have you hidden? Have you dimmed it down? Have you dimmed your light? Have you played small? It is time for you to be done with that. It is not rude to ask a woman her age. I've been coming against this lie for years and years and years, and I will never stop. Don't be a woman who says, oh, I'm, I'm 56 years young, or I'm 63 young. I'm 50 years old. I'm 51 this year, and I'm proud of it, and I love it. And my age is something I'm proud of, and I'm grateful for. And if you hide your age, then you're lacking humility around that which is given to you every single morning when you wake up, which is another day to go and live life and to do something good and powerful and noble in your corner of the world. Make the decision today. Make the decision to no longer believe and think or say, it's rude to ask a woman her age. Be the woman who is proud of her 64 years or her 68 years or her 73 years. My oldest client is 78. My youngest is 19, 18, 19. Most of us are between the ages of like 45 and 65. I'm here on a mission to paint the world red. You are wired for color, for community, and for connection. And fashion is a powerful connector. It is the Ferrari in your closet if you just learn how. So for you as a woman over 60, my best fashion tip for you today is to embrace your age. Accept it, love it, and say thank you for it. For it is your greatest gift to wake up every morning and receive another bit of age. That's what style looks like.